If you're a photographer on YouTube, you might have noticed a few of these things happening over the last 12 months or so. A lot of very similar looking videos with matching titles, matching thumbnails, covering very specific topics. You might have noticed small channels like this one blowing up out of seemingly nowhere. You may have also noticed specifically more recently, a lot of creators who are saying that they are gonna change how they approach photography on YouTube. This is a relatively small channel, but I've worked in this space for around about five years now. And I've spent a bit of time in the last week trying to understand where photography on YouTube is currently at, how we've got there, and why I think it's gonna change, hopefully for the better. Let's take a second firstly to talk about the very thing that powers YouTube the overlord that is the algorithm. The algorithm's designed to keep people on the platform. The longer it keeps people on the platform, the more money YouTube makes from ad revenue. It's capitalism at its finest. And these algorithms can typically be found everywhere. It's why social media is the way it is. It's why your Netflix home screen looks the way it looks. I'm gonna to touch on Netflix a little bit more later because I think they're doing something really, really right. The algorithm is what pushes some videos and it's what holds some videos back. In simple terms, the performance of a video can largely be dictated by its performance in those first few hours after launch. If a video does well, it then gets pushed into the feeds of other users and the growth of that video continues. I think the algorithm basically categorizes users. And a lot of us will sit in the category of being photographers. If videos hold the interest of users in this category, then it will get pushed to more users in this category. It's kind of like a recommendation structure. Like if X like this video, then Y will also like this video. But in my opinion, the algorithm is flawed. And I think this is why YouTube has gone the way it has in the last 12 or so months. If you don't really know what I'm talking about, then I'd question where you've been hiding because there's been certain trends on YouTube over the last 12 or 18 months of the same sort of videos, the same sort of titles, the same sort of thumbnails repeating themselves over and over and over again. Things like sharpness, ISO settings, beginner tips, and I'm not bashing anyone that makes or watches these kind of videos, these kind of videos are useful to people. And I've explored doing some of these kind of videos myself before and for good reason as well, which I'll come to shortly. You could argue that the algorithm is actually really good. These videos must be popular and you could argue that the algorithm does its job really well because it gives people what they want to see. But as a user of YouTube, I completely disagree. And I've spoke to a lot of photographers recently who also completely disagree. We don't want to see the same videos again and again and again. We want variety and diversity and quality and great storytelling. But the algorithm isn't really kind of pushing this kind of content all that much at the moment. So why is it that way? Well, I think it's to do with the immediacy of our attraction to certain topics, certain thumbnails, certain titles, and our brains wanting quick fix answers to certain problems. The algorithm gives us what it thinks we want to see. But what it actually gives us are things that are just really clickable. These crazy thumbnails and titles that seem to be most desirable to our monkey brains rather than our rational brains. And that's where the root of this problem lies. Us creators have got wise to what's highly clickable rather than the high quality story driven content that I talk about. And this isn't the case all over the place, but this is a general trend that I've noticed. We've caught on that YouTube pushes these videos more than anything else. More views, more subscriptions, and at the end of the day, more money. It's like a drug. And this is now applying to creators of all levels, and it's created a bit of a cycle. Recently, YouTube's been pushing videos from smaller channels, and it's been pushing them really hard. I've seen this personally on this channel. I released this video last year, and it wasn't a video on a hot topic, like a piece of gear, or sharpness or ISO or something like that, but it was insanely clickable because of the popular nature of the thumbnail and because of the title. It fed into what the algorithm loves to see. As a new channel, you can get seduced by what appears to be a very low barrier to entry. All in all, this video, not this video, that video, took me less than a day 
to produce from start to finish. That is from idea, scripting, filming, editing, publishing. It was less than a day. That is a very little amount of work for what then ensued afterwards. YouTube needs turnover in terms of creators for the sake of its longevity. It needs new creators to come through on the platform. So it pushes videos from smaller creators from time to time to give them a taste of what it's like and to hook them into the grind of making YouTube videos. It wants to show them what's possible for them. You get a video that pops off and it earns a decent amount of ad revenue and you start to think, well, that could happen with any one of my videos. So you're sucked in. And the videos that are most likely to be pushed in this way are those insanely clickable videos that I've spoken about. Pretty much monkey brain crack. Bigger, more established creators then see these videos from creators with less subscribers doing really, really well. And they think, okay, I can probably do similar to this, but with my increased experience, both on YouTube and maybe professionally as well, and my own unique sort of angle on it that my audience will appreciate. Maybe they think my growth has been a bit flat for a while, so I need something like this to push my channel to the next level. So you get a similar video being made by a bigger creator that then does exactly the same thing and gets a huge amount of views. And I'm not blaming them at all for doing that. You get to a point on this platform where you drop everything else and YouTube becomes your working life and suddenly you are reliant on ad revenue and you've got sponsors to kind of please and tempt into your channel. So hitting certain metrics becomes a bit more necessary and it becomes extremely stressful. And working in this game, I mean, I've seen firsthand how difficult it can be. It's such a hard game when you're constantly second guessing what will work on the platform and what won't work. So if you see something work well from a smaller creator and you can put your own spin on it, it's almost a guarantee to boosting those numbers that you're income is reliant on. And then smaller creators see these videos that bigger creators have done that have worked well, and then we're in the cycle that we're in now, where we're getting very similar videos promoted to us from all over the place. And this is nobody's fault but the algorithms. I mean, if you look at anyone coaching people into how to build a successful YouTube channel now, they literally say, copy what works. I honestly believe that people are tiring from this, and I don't just mean the consumers of these videos, I mean the creators as well. And this is why I think things are set to change. In the last few weeks, you've probably seen a number of big photography creators specifically state on their channels or on comments on other channels that for them, something needs to change. Like I've said, YouTube is hard. It needs to be fun for creators to keep going and keep producing videos week after week after week. Making these type of videos, the ones I explain, the insanely clickable ones, is just not fun. It's not enjoyable. And after a while, I think that begins to show as well. Creators will begin to tire of creating and might abandon the platform as a result. We may even see consumers begin to abandon the platform if it continues to push the types of video that it's pushing just through boredom and just through wanting to seek out something else. And clearly, that's bad news for YouTube. I think a lot of this can be pinpointed on what I believe is a big mistake that YouTube made, and that was the introduction of shorts to try and keep up with TikTok. This is probably my okay boomer moment. I'm not quite that old. But the, as I describe it, monkey brain fuel seems to be the driver behind all of this. And that seemed to switch on YouTube as YouTube started to push shorts more and more. But there is hope. There's a number of channels that continue to push against the grain. High quality, well-filmed, story-driven content that people love to watch and love to watch all the way through for entertainment's sake, not because they're seeking these quick fix answers. This is what I think the future will be built more around. And I think it's gonna have to, because as I say, I do believe that YouTube will start to lose viewers and creators if it carries on on the path it's currently going down. I know YouTube is massive and won't care about just photographers, but it isn't just photographers. This is the case in all niches across YouTube. The algorithm repeats the same things, whether it be for photographers or fitness. It's pushing the same kind of content in each one and people are tiring of it. I mentioned Netflix earlier and I think we only have to look as far as Netflix 
is a good way of doing things. Netflix doesn't rely on crazy thumbnails. It puts trust in its audience to find and watch the things that they want to watch. It shows content of the highest quality, things that people are likely to tell their friends about. If you watch something on Netflix about cats, you don't come back a day later to have your whole feed as a bunch of cat-related videos. Netflix, to me, represents the death of this repeating content that viewers and creators are losing interest in. I feel like YouTube needs to work on the distribution of a diverse array of content to consumers across all niches, not just photography. People are smart enough to figure out what they want to watch without an algorithm dictating everything. And I think when Silicon Valley catches up with this, the way we view YouTube will change considerably. I honestly believe that good content will win out. YouTubers will need to focus on high quality and really good storytelling in the future of YouTube to be a success on the platform. If you're looking to grow on YouTube, that's, that's what I concentrate on. That's what I am trying to concentrate on with this channel and just keeping it fun in the process because that shows through at the end of the day. Don't go chasing the trends and stay positive with regard to this platform. It's an amazing place for photographers to learn, to show their work, to see other people's work and to build community. And I don't think there's ever really been anything else quite like it. I might be wrong, but I hope I'm not because I believe that this is the experience that most of us photographers wish to have when using YouTube. What are your thoughts on where we're at at the moment with YouTube? Let me know in the comments below.